thank you. We are grateful, Lord, for all the processes you have taken us through for the journeys from the first year 2019 till date. You have been faithful, oh God. And we say, Lord, thank you. We give you thanks, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. Le baya kabaya, le brankom branda gaya, ika bando nogo via kabaya, e shanda rabata, ika bando brigenda bosa. For the stormy weather, you have been there with us. You have been pushing us. You have been shielding us. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Aya na ya, lega timani. Iku bali gidi baya gabaya, zidi guru bidi gidi, iku balaga diga balaga higa, regundu binde bundo boh, lebrati suvit, lebrake da bogo da bandegan da basa, rabadong randa shanda bandegan da banda 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 ba, ingrundu bige be 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 be, lebratu si 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 si, lebrundu baya. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 For the word of God said And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb And by the words of their testimony For they love not their life unto death And what is the prayer? We are going to plead the blood of Jesus Over the souls of men Over the souls of everyone That is connected to the Master Builder Global Church Everyone in the Master Builder Global Church We are going to plead the blood of Jesus and over the environment we come by the blood of Jesus we activate the speakings of the blood the blood of Jesus that speak better things we activate the blood over this program over this conference we activate the blood over every soul watching online and on site lift up your voice and begin to plead the blood the Bible says that we overcame, that we overcame. There is an overcoming power in the blood of Jesus. And that is what the Lord has given you authority to plead the blood and condemn every force, every lying lip that is speaking against you in this program that you will not break forth. The blood is available to overcome. Lift up your voice. I'm beginning to plead the blood. Aya, 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 aya. I plead the blood of Jesus over my soul, over the souls of men. I plead the blood. Aya, 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 aya. Zanina Kubala Gayaga, Ikumbendo Sanda Banda 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 Ba, Ikubala da Grandiza, Obolo de Gede Gede Gede, Igradu Zovele Maria Tayeta, Igrandiza, Igrandiza, Oboli Atalia, Talia, 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 Ali Atalia, Kumbrandiza, Kavanda de Galigan de Bosa, Imbranda, Branda, Branda, Branda Baha, Lebrega de Baya, we come by the blood, and we overcome the enemy of your destiny, we overcome the enemy. The voices are speaking against you, against your breaking forth. We overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ. Haya, Rabba Ali Gidi, Shale Gorodo Yediga, Rege Dobolo Gosia Dabaya, Lebre de Dobolobologa. I aga baba randerige zelebre de de bele de i bara da 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 de herra godoga i ga ya 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 i tumbiga. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
and the word of God were praying from the book of John chapter 20 verse 22 and when he said this he breathed upon them and said it unto them receive ye the Holy Ghost and what is the prayer we're going to say father as we have come into your presence this morning, breathe upon us. Breathe your glory upon our spirit. Breathe your glory upon our spirit this morning. In the name of Jesus. Breathe your glory upon our spirit this morning. In the name of Jesus. We pray, oh Lord, for a breath from you. The breath of the Lord. The breath of the Lord. We ask for your breath, oh God, over this service. We ask for your breath, oh God, over this program. That we cause men uh, to bring forth uh, that we cause men uh, to bring forth uh, it was the breath of God uh, that came out of the noses of God uh, that blasted uh, 12 parts uh, 12 parts uh, for the children of Israel uh, to cross uh, into their destiny uh, there is a breath of God uh, that is available uh, begin to ask the father I ask uh, for the breath uh, that will make me bring forth uh, in this season uh, in the name of Jesus Rabba do boriata, Rabba baba bada borigaya, Shina na kumbande gesiata, Lebato vende de dida, La raduzi di 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 dia, Iba no go do bi, Zero vende de 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 de, Ibra di 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 di, Ibra gidu de di 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 Ebre de 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 da, ahi vi de 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 de, le ra da 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 de, i car ra da 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 de, il a rigi de 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 de, le rigi do vilia, ahi kumbini, kumbini de de, le rega de de, ask the Lord for that breath that will change the situations, ask the Lord for that breath, the breath of God, the breath of God, e riba riba riga, e rega de 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 diata, zolo bre de 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 de. You will do yourself great injustice if you are not praying. If you are not praying, the word of God says, As I hear them say, not as he hears me say, but what you say is what God will do for you in this conference. Lift up your voice and begin to say, Father, we ask for your breath upon us, Lord. Reba come ya kanaya le riba su de 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 bosa reba ko bala ka skatum grandisa le go boro go bien de bosa le ba ya da bala da ya da le bre de 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 bari aton de de sanda ba le bre ka tom bre de bre de bre de bre de bre de ba e ka shanda ka ta ba re de 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 bari ata ze le bre de disa le bre de ka da be da gia e ro be de do go be le da e ka sa de le ba ye ka ba ya e gra da 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 e ko bo te ya e ko bo te ya E kobotia, e kombendo de doga, de doga doga ribaya, e kumbundi zakita, temporote te te te, in bredu vidigaya, e kubata yata, the bread that will change things in your life, the bread that will turn around, the bread of God, we ask over this service, over this meeting, over this program, over this conference, Lord, the fifth anniversary, breaking forth, that the bread of God will cause men to pray. Bring forth in all sides in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now we're praying from the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22. For ye have come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which is written in heaven. And to, God, and to God the church of all what are we praying for we are going to pray for an encounter we are encounter with the presence of God an encounter with the word of God an encounter with the angels that have been deployed to break you forth to break you forth ask the Lord this morning for that encounter that that encounter with that angel that have been sent to break you forth begin to ask father today i ask for an encounter in the name of jesus hey yeah yeah sando balegede 
Ira da da ke do bide. Obolo do gobolo goya. Raba da karia tum brendiza. Ebo rogo balaga yaga bayaga. Iyaga da 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 da. Zalang randuze. Geli ke bolo go bolo go bolo go. Iyanda balaga balaga balaga. Engrasa da baya. Eliaga baya ga baya. Eliaga ya ga ga. Raba da. There are angels that have been deployed for this meeting. There are angels that have been deployed by the Father. Begin to ask, Lord, I encounter. Grant me an encounter. Lord, with the angel, grant me an encounter, Lord, with your spirit, grant me an encounter, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Shababali gidiya, rabatosi garabiti di, lebre gende kada bayesa. Zerobe de Cadabella, Rabatos in the Gedagadia, Rabababa, Ebrega de Bogodea, Rabato Bene de Boniga, Rega de Gedagadia, Zala Brandi Gidiga, Ecobre de Dea, Ecombrandi Zagabaya. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're praying from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you and I the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. That verse 18 says, That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of His calling and what is the riches of His glory in His inheritance for the saints. And what are we praying right now? We are going to pray and say, Father, grant us the spirit of wisdom. Grant all the speed of revelation uh, into your word, uh, into your word. Uh, may your word be unlocked unto me. Uh, may your word come alive unto me uh, in this meeting, uh, in this morning section. Uh, open up, oh Lord, uh, your word unto me uh, by the spirit uh, of wisdom, uh, by the spirit uh, of revelation uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. I uh, as the Lord for an understanding at your level in him as the Lord to grant you understanding of his word at the level where you are in God let the Lord open up by his spirit the word let the word come alive in your soul in you right now in this morning section in the name of Jesus here, Shandere Gebaiga. I am no Gabayaga. Salia Kumbrandiza Gabayaga. I borrow the Degadiga. I Kubala Kayakabaya. Kayando no Gabayaga. Kayandum Brandiza Yata. Embale de Borotovia. Bano de Bariga Yate. Celebre de Det. Bari Bari Bariga. Iigi di 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 di. Le lembrendo gea, lembrendo coveligidea, lebregadega. If you are joining us online, get connected and pray. Ask the Lord for the spirit of wisdom and revelation into his word, in the knowledge of him, in the name of Jesus. Andere. Honoro de gedo belege. Liberi di di numeno, che poi de ya ya, e mundo di di, mundo di di di, le botte ya, le botte ya, le rondo, i cuvoda cataia, le brindo vili, le brindo va va va, e rondo si 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 si, i cubi di 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 ya, a ronde sotai, i cura ti si 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 si. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We pray from the book of First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. The Bible said, and my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. And what are we praying? We're going to say, Father, 
Let your word come unto me with the demonstration of your spirit and of your power. Let the power, let your power cause notable miracles. Let your power cause a push. Let your power cause a breakthrough. Let your power cause a breakthrough in my destiny, in my family, in this body section, in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Begin to pray wherever you are. Salandu velegeli endeba le prega de bayaka bayaka lembrando kabayaka i ask so oh lord let your word let your word come to me in the doing a demonstration of your spirit the spirit that causes transformation the spirit that causes breaking forth your spirit and your power that ignites the fire on the inside of destinies that are meant to be breaking forth Lord, we ask in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus, let it come unto us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, right now we're going to take charge of our space and we're going to bind every demonic horn, every forces from the pit of hell that is resisting your breaking forth in this convention. Whatever that has been programmed from hell to stop your breaking forth, take charge right now and begin to bind every demonic horn, every forces from hell. Begin to bind them right now in the name of Jesus. We bind and we take charge of our space. We declare today every demonic horn that have risen against this program, against this morning section, against the destinies of men. We bind them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Right now, lift up your voice. I'm beginning to give the Lord thanks. Worship Him. Thank Him for answered prayer. Thank Him for your breaking for this morning. Give Him thanks. Worship Him. Glorify the name of our God. Father, we give you thanks for it is done. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we jump those hands together for Jesus? Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We bless your name, Jesus. Are you ready to praise God this morning? Are you ready to praise God this morning? Okay, let's go. Come on, shake that body for Jesus. Come on. You are God. You are not just people. You are not just Lord. You are a great God.
of the blind, there's nobody like you, hey, no like you. Listen, for five years, into the darkness we shine, hey, out of the ashes we rise, nobody like you, hey, no like you. Sing, our God is great.
say, Jehovah, 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 you say, Jehovah, 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 Show the time he created. We worship you, the supreme king, the immortal king of Zion. We hail you this morning. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest to the lamb that was slain for our redemption. Lord, we give you all the praise. Hosanna bukole. Hallelujah. Hosanna.
powerful is your name. How glorious, how glorious, how glorious is your name. How beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful, how Exalt the name of the Lord, give him praise, give the King of Kings praise, tell him, Father, thank you for an opportunity to be in your presence once again. Exalt his holy name, exalt his holy name, exalt his holy name. Father, we say thank you for an opportunity again to be in Zion this morning. Hallowed be your name. In the name of Jesus, we worship. 
Hallelujah. Is someone excited to be in the house this morning? Somebody give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Exalt the name of the Lord. Father, we say thank you for another opportunity. Hallelujah. No, but before you get seated, before you get seated, this meeting is, is organized by a set of persons. If they were not to be in this city, we wouldn't be here. If they are not to be in the place where God has designed them to be, you and I won't be here. Let's celebrate the gift of God to this generation, our father and our mother. Daddy, we say thank you for the sacrifices. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for organizing this program. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. It is our fifth year anniversary. With it, uh, uh, If you want to shout, you can shout. Hallelujah. With a team, break forth. So we are going to break forth in all areas, in all dimensions, from all sides. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Light, not, last night was something else. This morning I know God is taking us to another level. Hallelujah. Just get seated and be expectant and God will lift you up in the name of Jesus. Following us online, we welcome you to this online service. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. In the next 35 minutes, we'll be having the ministry of Pastor Princely Abuku. Jam your hands together to the Lord as we welcome Pastor Princely Abuku as he comes to minister to God this morning. Jam your hands together to the Lord as he comes to minister to us. Jam your hands together to the Lord. You're welcome, sir. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. I bring you greetings from my father. Apostle Goodheart Obi Ekweme. Can you please put your hands together? He's someone that the Lord has used in these many years to shape my life and to uh, make me who I am today by the grace of God. I want to thank Pastor Abraham for the privilege to minister to you this morning. I do not take it for granted at all. Amen. 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 Are you ready to receive the word this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. Please, can you help me on the keyboard? Thank you, sir. Whilst you're seated where you are, I just want us to take this song very quickly. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you return. Jesus, I am your own. Can we do that together? I am your I am your own. Until the day you reach, Jesus, I am your, I am your own, I am your, oh, I am your own. Until the day you reach, Jesus, I am your, oh, I am your own. Lord, I am, I am yours. Till the day you, the day you will come. Jesus, Jesus, I am yours. I surrender all to you. Everything I give. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I surrender all, I surrender, I give it all to you, Lord, everything I give to you. In two minutes, can you make that song your prayer point? Father, I'm here to surrender all to you. I'm not going to withhold any part of my being. I give to you withholding nothing, 
Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Father, we thank you for the privilege to offer you our lives as a living sacrifice. Father, we make this commitment this morning to you that our all belongs to you. Till the day that you will come, our all belongs to you. Father, make my mouth the pen of a ready writer this morning. Let your word comfort unhindered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll speak your counsel to the glory and the praise of your name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Is somebody in church this morning? Hallelujah. For a topic this morning, I will be taking engaging kingdom service for your break forth. Our scripture reading will be taken from the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Tap your neighbor, say neighbor, seek first the kingdom of God. Tap your other neighbor. Say, neighbor, seek first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. It is time for us to disconnect with plain church. It is time for us to discontinue with drifting along with what is happening around. It is time for us to determine, to adjust, and to realign with the purposes, the agenda of God for our lives. Apostle speaking yesterday, he made us to understand that we are in a new season and we are in the season of breaking forth. And for you to take advantage of every prophetic word, you must be careful. You must be diligent to realign yourself to that new season. I'll give this example. Imagine someone traveling from the heat of Nigeria to the U.S. where probably it's winter and snow is falling everywhere. In those temperatures, you have minus zero degrees temperatures. And then the person is wearing just probably short knickers and a sleeveless shirt. That person is going to die of cold coming into the airport. Because that person has not aligned themselves. They have not arranged themselves for the new season that they are entering into. That is why it is very vital. It is important for us to take alignment, realignment, and adjustment for the season of breaking forth. You see, at the end of the day, there are going to be two sets of people. Those that will break forth and those that will not break forth. The difference will be those that aligned themselves for the season and those that did not align themselves for the season. Jesus speaking in the book of John chapter 4 and verse 34, he says, Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Not to chase after anything else, but to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. He knew the starting point, he knew what the assignment was, and he knew the finishing point. The question this morning is, do you know why you are here? Do you know what was written concerning your life before the foundations of time? Apostle Paul, speaking in the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 24, he says, but none of these things move me. He had encountered persecutions of all kind. But he said, none of these things move me. Why? Neither count I my life there unto myself so that I might finish my course. He knew that there's a finishing line. Finish it with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So every minute that you have on the face of the earth. The breath that you take, if you're going to live for 90 years, if you're going to live for 100 years, is to finish an assignment that was written in the volume of the books before you were sent here. So a purposeful life is one that takes a hold of that assignment and ensures that every breath that they, that they take is one that will pursue that assignment to the very letter. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. I hope you're writing this morning. I'm going to be a little bit fast because the time is really short. It says, Know ye not that they which run in the race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. 
And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. Verse 26. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Hence, you must speak aside. There are those that are living for the purposes and the agenda of God. And there are those that are living for self and selfish interest. You must speak aside this morning. That is the word that the Lord sent me to bring to you this morning to pick a side. Are you going to decide to live for Jesus or you are going to decide to continue living for yourself? Are you going to decide to commit to Jesus and to his church? To take a hold of the burdens of, in the heart of the Father and to run with it. Taking a hold of commitment for Jesus and for his work establishing your you are stamping your foot on the sands of time that I came here and that the entirety of my life was spent in enshrining the purposes and the design and the agenda of God upon the face of the earth the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 that we read our, our pilot text it says to seek First, the kingdom of God. Very quickly, what does it mean to seek? To seek means to preoccupy yourself with something. It means to pursue. It means to study. I hope you're writing. I'm really fast because of the time. It means to explore. It means to understand. It means to learn. It means to place in highest priority. That means to seek, to seek, to seek. What do you do? You seek first. Are you seeking welfare? Are you seeking miracles? Are you seeking healing? What is it that you're seeking? It is time for us to just take this little time off to reconsider our work with the Lord. What truly are you seeking? What truly am I seeking? Is it the kingdom of the Lord? So to seek means to be diligent, to dedicate oneself to pursue after something. Seek first, 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 the divine priority of the kingdom of God. Seek first, first means that this, this is placed before everything else. It is most important. It is of highest priority. Everything else is placed as secondary compared to this very thing, which is the kingdom of God. So this is primary. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom? The kingdom is the king and the sphere of influence that that king has. That is what the kingdom is. Please, you can write. What is the kingdom? The kingdom is the king... And the sphere of influence that the king has. We'll look very quickly at five characteristics of a kingdom. Number one is that the kingdom must have a king. And the king reigns as supreme leader. He reigns sovereignly. His word is law. There's no contending with his word. His word is what? His word is law. And in this kingdom, the word of Jesus are laws to us. Jesus is the king of this kingdom. Every kingdom must have what? A king. Number two, every kingdom must have a territory. Jesus teaching his disciples to pray says, pray doors like this. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. On earth as it is in heaven. So it is God's will. His original purpose is that his will will be done on the face of the earth. Just as it is in heaven. So the territory of the kingdom, the desire of God is that the territory of the kingdom is the whole earth. Not just Nigeria, not just Africa, not just Asia, not just Europe. It is that his will will cover the whole earth. Hallelujah. So the territory... Of the kingdom of God, his design and his desire is that the territory of his kingdom is the whole world, the whole earth. Number three, so number one, a kingdom has what? A king. Number two is that the kingdom has a territory. Number three is that the kingdom has citizens. You became a citizen of the kingdom of heaven when you believed in your heart and you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are given your card, your, your citizenship card. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Number three, number four, number four. Every kingdom has a constitution. The constitution of this kingdom is the word of God, the Bible. 
understanding the scripture will lead you to understanding the constitution hey, of what is available in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you do not understand the scriptures, you do not understand your rights and your privileges. You do not understand your responsibility also. Just like Apostle was saying yesterday. So there are rights and privileges for the believer, but there are also responsibilities for the believer. For instance, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So that is what happened when you became in Christ. Listen to this. In verse 18 it says, And all things are of God who had reconciled us back to himself in Christ Jesus and had given unto us what? The ministry of reconciliation. So this is happening that you're translated from the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of light. But there is a responsibility for you. You are given what? A ministry of reconciliation. That is reconciling men back to God. In verse 19 it says, To wit that God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world back unto himself and had given unto us the word of reconciliation. So if you do not know the constitution, if you do not know the scriptures, how are you going to know what your responsibility is? Our God is not a vending machine. No, 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 no. He was not created for us. We were created for him. Do you understand what I'm saying to you this morning? We were created for him. It is in the scripture that you will know what your rights are, what your privileges are. It is in the scripture you will know that you are seated with Christ Jesus. High above every principality, high above every power. Hallelujah. That is where you will understand that demons are beneath you. So when you see the manifestation of demons around, you know to take authority over them. You don't begin to fidget and begin to look for pastor. You are given authority over these demons. Amen. Amen. Number five, every kingdom has a government. And the government of this kingdom is not a democracy. It is a theocracy. It is where the word of the king is law. You don't argue with it. You don't negotiate with it. You align yourself with it. Hallelujah. 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 Is somebody in church this morning? Hallelujah. We'll look at principles of kingdom stewardship. Number one, please write very quickly. God has given every man a gift. There is no one that is without a gift or a talent. God has given each and every one of us a gift. We see that parable in Matthew chapter 25. The master and the Lord of the house was going to go on a trip. And then he gave to some five, gave to some three, and then gave to, to another one. And then the one that was given just one talent went and hid it. He did not invest it. He did not do anything with it. He went and he hid it. The master said, you are a wicked servant. You are a bad servant. Why not just go and keep this in the bank so that at least it will accrue some interest. So there is no one that has not been given something to serve God with. Hallelujah. Number two, God does not necessarily give every man the same kind so that your brother has the ability to sing, for instance, and then the other man has the ability to administrate, and then the other have the ability or the ministry of helps and have the ministry, different kinds of ministries, all work in the self same spirit. You have something. Don't just say, hey, this is the one I covet. It is good for you to covet it. But there is one that you were born with. Hallelujah. When you were in Christ, there is something that you were in Christ with. You were born with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So everybody has something to serve God with. Amen. Number three, God gives every man gifts based on their capacity. Number four, God rewards, increases the initial gifts given to individuals based on their level of faithfulness over what God has given them. You must learn to run your own lane. You must learn to do what? Run your own lane. Don't say because this man is running like this, okay, I will align myself with how he's working. No. There is a lane that has been set for you. Amen. So God rewards and he increases the initial gifts based on the gifts that you were given him. Promotion in the kingdom is by faithfulness and stewardship. 
So there are those that are called to public ministries, for instance. The apostles, the teachers, the preachers, the evangelists, and the prophets, they, they, are, they are given to public ministry. And a lot of times that looks very attractive because you see the glamour that surrounds it. But there are those that are called into the ministry of intercession. At midnight, when the pastor is probably resting, there are those that are praying from 12 to 3, just ensuring that the hand of the pastor is held. There are ministries in the secret, but it is not less important. Are you listening to me this morning? Their ministry is what is in the secret. Nobody sees it. Nobody honors them for it. But we don't look to men for our reward. We don't look to men for, for commendation. No, 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 no. We look to God for our reward. For he is a rewarder. If we continue and we do not faint in well-doing, he is one who is called what? He is the rewarder. So whether what you're doing, pastor is aware or not, continue faithfully. There is one that is seen and there is one that has his reward in his hands. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Four dimensions of kingdom stewardship. The book of Luke chapter 16 and verse 10. It says that he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your own trust the true riches? And if, if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Kai, are you faithful? Am I faithful? But how this works is that first of all, you'll be faithful in another man's business. And then yours will be given unto you. Number one, four dimensions of kingdom stewardship. Number one is that kingdom stewardship or commitment to Jesus and to his church becomes number one priority. It is not after you've given your best to your job or to your business, then the remaining one, you bring it to Jesus. No, 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 no. He deserves the best and then the rest can be given to everything else. But we have observed that the reverse is the case. We give our best to everything else, to the pursuit of mammon, to the pursuit of our well-being. And then we bring the remaining small thing that is left, we bring it to serve the Lord. You spend your youth in chasing after lusts. You spend your youth in chasing after fame. You spend your youth in chasing after money. And then when you are old and there's no energy left, you want to now come and serve the Lord. No, 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 no. The protocol is that Jesus deserves the best of us. The best of our gifts. The best of our time. The best of our energy. The best of our talent. Hallelujah. So the priority must be that we are giving our best to the Lord. The book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 speaks to this. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, the same, that shall he reap also. Number two, attitude. Number one is what? Is that it's first priority. Number two is attitude. What? Not attitude now. H-E-A-R-T. Attitude. What does this mean? It means that your attitude is such that your service is from the heart to the Lord. Not as a man pleaser. Are you listening to me this morning? Your service is from the heart to the Lord. Not as a man pleaser. I heard this statement by Kenneth E. Hagen a long time ago and it stuck with me. He said that Jesus, he was in a conversation with the Lord and Jesus told him, he said that he was going to judge spiritual sins faster than physical sins. What does this mean? Spiritual things are things that are in the heart or not visible to the eyes. In other words, you can go out on evangelism and you win 10 souls to impress the pastor. Hmm. But the motive was wrong. Instead, you see, those 10, 10 souls, by the mercies of God, are going to get saved. They'll be added to the church and the kingdom will be rejoicing. But for you, because your attitude was wrong, your motive and your intention was wrong, you are going to get a demerit. You are going to get a minus instead of a plus. 
This is how vital this thing is. That as we serve the Lord diligently, as we serve the Lord, we must ensure that our service comes from the heart. Not to impress any man. No, 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 no. But that when you stand before he who has sent you into the realm of time, you have a report card before him. And he will say, Kai, I remember this thing that you did. It was true. It was true. It was not to impress me. It was genuine. It was genuine. I, I see this thing that you did. Serving in the choir. Serving in the ocean department. Serving in the protocol. Serving here and there. It was genuine. He is the one that sees into the heart. Oh, I cannot. Pastor, nobody can see into your intentions. But he sees into your intentions and he judges your service based on your intention. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You must do it unto the Lord. Number three, it must be unto the Lord. The book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17, he says, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 and verse 24, it says, And whatsoever ye do, do ye heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, of the Lord, of the Lord. He is the rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. No man, no man can reward you, sir. No man can pay you for what you do. No man. So if you're looking for a thank you for, from the pastor, you are looking in the wrong direction. If you are looking for a well done from the pastor, you're looking in the wrong direction. Look unto Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Number four, sacrifice. There must be an element of sacrifice with our service. So if you feel it, if the thing is pinching, if the thing pained you, I, I tell you it will echo in eternity. But what you do in convenience is every time that you're convenient, you, you just feel, oh, okay, I have little time now, then I go to church. Like Pastor was saying yesterday, there are those who could have been here physically, but they decided, okay, I'll do online. I went to do business in the day. I went to, the, to my workplace in the day, so I am too tired to go to church. I'm going to do online. He forbade them yesterday. Say, no online. Come on site. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we must have an element of sacrifice in our service. If it is uncomfortable, the Holy Ghost is beckoning on you, okay, it's time for you to go on this seven-day fast. And just when that seven-day fast is about to start, that is when they will bring your favorite meal. A strange fellow will just order it for you, and it, it will just appear on your table like this. And then you'll be wondering, I say, oh God, oh God, what is this? And then you'll be thinking, okay, tomorrow I will do it. Tomorrow something else will come up. Next tomorrow something, hmm, sacrifice. Sacrifice. When the Spirit of the Lord comes beckoning on you and telling you it is time to pray, it is time to seek my face, and you're just rolling on that bed, you're saying, okay, Holy Ghost, just give me 10 more minutes. By the, the, the next time you're opening your eyes, it's, it's 6 a.m. This was 12 midnight. The Holy Ghost tapped you. He said, it's time to pray. Say, just, you open your eyes, it's, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. And you have missed a window of opportunity where you, you should have interceded. Probably the life of someone was at stake. Probably there's something that is coming and the Holy Ghost wants to avert it. That you needed to make power available, energy available for the Spirit of God to work on your behalf. But you were too lazy to do that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now we are co-laborers with the Lord. Ooh, what a privilege to be co-laborers with the Lord. What a privilege to be co-laborers with the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 7 and verse 8. It says, so then, neither is he that planted anything... Neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Woo! Now he that planted and he that watereth are one. Hey. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So Paul plants, Apollos waters, and God gives the increase. We are in a partnership with Jesus. What, what, do you think there is anything greater? Do you think there is any position greater? Is it working in World Health? Is it working in an oil company? Is it working with the United States government? What else is greater than working with the king of the universe? The creator of the universe. So we are called co-laborers together with him. The book of Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 4. It is an honor. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. 
It is an honor to serve God. Hallelujah. Preach to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you have the honor of serving God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen. The book of Zechariah, chapter 4 and verse 6, as we try to begin to wrap this up. It says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Who art thou, O great mountain before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. He is the one that sends us forth, but he is the one that enables us for the work. So you cannot do it in your own energy. The energy that is requisite, that is necessary to prosecute the will, the agenda, and the purposes of God is supplied by him. It is called grace. It is called grace. In a short while, we'll pray for that grace. Can you ask God for grace? In the genuineness and the truth of your heart, ask Him for grace. Divine enablement of God. Divine enablement of God. I know that in myself I do not possess the ability or the capacity to do your work. I ask, O oh Father, for grace. I ask, O oh Father, for grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are we in church this morning? In Jesus' name. Amen. The attitude of committed people. We'll race through this and we're done. Number one is that they have the attitude of commitment. Commitment. This is the power to endure hardship. So in the face of seeming impossibilities, of troubles, of storms, of billows, of trials, of tempests, commitment is what keeps a man going. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3 and verse 4, it says that thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. Soldiers are committed men. So the number one is that people who have the commitment to Jesus and to his work, to his church uh, on the face of the earth is that they are committed men. Come rain, come sunshine, they are committed. Whether they have food or they are hungry, they are committed. Whether they are broke or there's plenty, they are committed. Re they may have lost a loved one, but they remain committed. Regardless of what Satan throws at them, they remain committed. No matter the test and the trials that they go through, they remain committed. We have come to those days where God will raise for himself. Soldiers, men that have no concern for their well-being. I am telling you. Men whose appetite will be so transformed that the only burden in their heart is the burden of the kingdom of God. To the detriment of their own self. They will say, Kai, oh, this prison, this prison, these people need to hear the word of God. But they tell them, if you go in there, you cannot come out. And they say, ah, Kai. They seek the face. So is this what you want for me at this time? They go and tell their parents, bye-bye. Tell their wives, bye-bye. Tell their husbands, bye-bye. Tell their children. It means this is the end. It's not like I'm traveling and then after 20 years, I'm coming back. Men who have the spirit of the martyr come on them for the propagation of the gospel, for the propagation of the kingdom of God. These are those days. Number two. These will be men who refuse to be entangled by the affairs of this life. Number three. 
Their concern is not with pleasing self. Their only agenda is to bring pleasure to the heart of the Father. So their key focus is on the Father's will, not on self. The book of John chapter 5 and verse 30, it says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is judged because I seek not my own will. This was the secret to the success of Jesus' ministry. As he saw the Father do, so he does. He seeks not his own will, but the will of the Father. At the garden of Gethsemane, he said, not my own will, but yours be done. Hallelujah. So these are men who at the detriment of themselves will go after seeking the will of the Father. They are not concerned with pleasing self. Number four, they have their eyes on the prize. The book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 and verse 14. It says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the price of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same. Shall be so. These are men that have learned endurance. These men that have, that have committed themselves that come what may, I will endure the hardship. Amen. Number five, they compete according to the rules of the game. Second Timothy 2 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. There are rewards, and these men understand the rewards of kingdom stewardship. They understand the rewards of commitment to Jesus. They understand the rewards of commitment to his work. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 6, it says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. Which, having no guard of a seer or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Revelations 22 and verse 12. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according as his work shall be. Can we rise up this morning? Jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up, soldiers. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14, it says, Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, hey, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Awake, awake. That is the word of the Lord that I bring to you this morning. Awake out of your slumber. Awake out of your sleep. Awake. Awake, 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 awake. And commit to Jesus. Awake and commit to Jesus. Awake and commit to Jesus. For the life that you are given is to serve his purpose. Not to serve yourself. We are going to pray. Mm. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. We'll pray this prayer in three minutes. I'll read from the Amplified Classic. It says, not in your own strength. For it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and the desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. I want you to look for a neighbor, just one neighbor. Hold the hand of that neighbor. You will pray for that your neighbor. For that, your brother, for that, your sister. Just one neighbor, just one neighbor, please. And then you pray for that person. Father, strengthen my brother, strengthen my sister. Please pray, I beg you. Radaka pekete sivrianda balato savili heri atana men dekete beria. There is the supply of energy, but it is only in the spirit. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. Say the Lord, Abaronda Kefeli de Etefana, Imbranda Barra does as is the Vidia Tamatite. And if the spirit of him that raised up Christ indwells you, that self same spirit will quicken and the Atokopede the Atta. Men arising, giants arising, men that are enabled by the Holy Ghost, men that find energy supplied by the Holy Ghost, 
Men that have no sufficiency in themselves. Men that will depend on the supply of the spirit. Please pray for your brother. He is the one that is perpetually energizing us. He is the one that is continually supplying the power for us to walk for his good pleasure. Someone pray this morning, ask the Lord for deeper understanding. Ask the Lord for the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened. Ask the Lord for deeper insight into the truths that you heard. And let it not just be another information, but let it be a practical knowledge that will change things in your life. That will change how you respond to God and to the things of the Spirit.
Thank you, Heavenly Father. We'll give you praise and we'll give you glory. Have your way and let Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. May be seated. Good morning, all. I welcome every one of you again to the morning session, day two of our fifth anniversary. And it's a conference that's going to run from today. Sorry, we started yesterday and it's going to run and climax on Sunday. Praise the Lord. And I want to appreciate very greatly, especially the Apostle Goodheart Obiakweme, who was there yesterday and he was something else. This morning he sent one of his pastors and he told me it's going to be good that the man is anointed and I saw of a truth that um, Pastor Abutu, you, is he Abutu or Abugu? Abutu. Okay. Pastor Prince Will Abutu. That was a good one. The Lord bless you so much. Pastor Prince Will Abutu he was sent in this morning and we're blessed for from the ministration that he gave to us this morning. Please, if you have your Bible, you can turn to the book of Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And um, from verse 16, okay, from verse 15 for a good understanding. Colossians chapter 1. Please get the monitor up anytime you see me standing here. Colossians chapter 1. The Son is the image of the invisible God. And the Son here is Jesus. But if you also understand, we are made to conform to the image of the Son. The plan of God and the design of God for everyone in Christ is to conform to the image of the Son. The Son himself is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. So the Son Jesus is the image of God, the invisible one. God the Father in heaven. But the plan of God, if you look at the book of Romans, we're going to get there shortly. If you look at the book of Romans, okay, Romans chapter 8, we're going to read 28, 29, is that everyone will have to conform to the image of the Son that manifests or reveals the image of God the Father. Romans chapter 8 from verse 28. And we know that all things work to them for of them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. Verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of the Son. So who is the Son? That we all must conform to his image. The son who is made in the image of God. So the son according to Colossians chapter 1 from verse 15. Is the image of the invisible God. But this son that is in the image of the invisible God. The plan of God for everyone in Christ is to conform to the image of the son that reveals the image of the father. The image principle, because what is simply explains, God will not use a man much until that man or woman conforms. So the reason the son was used by God to bring redemption to humanity and to bring everything that he brought to us is because that same son has conformed to his image and reveals his image. And the plan of God for you and I is to conform to the image of Christ that whoever sees us doesn't see us but sees Christ. That is the plan of God. 
that whoever sees you and I doesn't see you, but sees Christ in you. Oh. Well, that's not where I'm supposed to go this morning. But, but um, if we can spend a little time there, okay, maybe we'll get back there. Verse 16. Verse 16. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones and powers, or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him, and all things were created for him. In another place, the word of God declares that we are also created to bring him pleasure. So all things were created for him. All things were created by him. And all things were created for him, including you. Please come. There's something I want to bring out here. All things were created by him. And all things were created for him. That involves you. You were not created for yourself. You were not created to bring pleasure to yourself. You were created to bring pleasure to him that created you. Because you were made for him, not for yourself. Your life becomes relevant to him. And the relevance of your life to him and his kingdom is revealed by how much of pleasure that you bring to him that created you for himself. You know the reason you use your phone is that your phone brings you pleasure. Is it true? I'm asking, is it true? Your smartphone brings you pleasure. When you want to go on Facebook, you have downloaded the Facebook app and you can go on Facebook when you want to do WhatsApp and the different things. Per adventure, you start using that phone and instead of bringing you pleasure, you go on Facebook and you want to go on Facebook, it has gone to TikTok. You want to go to TikTok, it has gone to WhatsApp. You want to go to WhatsApp, the phone that has a mind of its own. You want to make calls, that is when the phone wants to chat. You want to chat, that is when the phone just wants to go blind. And doesn't want to respond to you again. There are sometimes you are so frustrated with the phone that you just pick it up and smash it. Some other times you leave it in the house. Because the phone has a mind of its own. It doesn't do what you want done. It does what it likes to do. You put the phone on. When you want to use it, pum, 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 battery low. And it has gone off. You go and charge it again. Charge it for six. You saw 70% charge. But you just want to make it go pum, pum, pum. And it goes off. To you, you conclude in your head, I don't have a phone. The reason you don't have a phone is that it's not responding to you. It's something that responds the way he wants to respond, not the way you want it to respond. So in your work with God, you need to come to the point where you don't respond to God how you feel, but you respond to God the way he wants you to respond to him. Your relevance and influence in the kingdom of God is determined by how relevant you are to God and his kingdom agenda. Because I'm coming to that. So you were created by him and you were created for him. You were not created or made for yourself. You need to have this understanding. So what it means is that you need to discover why he made you. If he created you, you need to discover why he made you. Your understanding of this will bring you to the point of relevance and importance to him. One of the greatest challenge we have is that we have allowed the enemy to seduce our hearts. And to put things in our heart that, not, that are not in line with the things that God has planned for us. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, I brought up a talk. And that talk is that the endless expectation of the creation. Go back to Romans chapter 8. And we're going to journey from the Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. 
from 18. 19 is the earnest expectation, but we're going to read verse 18 to Romans chapter 8. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worth to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, why are they waiting? Why are the whole creation waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God? I came this morning to tell you that this is the season of the manifestation of the sons of God. This is not the season of the manifestation of a son of God. This is the season of the manifestation of the sons of God. And the reason God sent you to the Master Builder Global Church is to grow and get to the point where you become a son because creation is waiting for your manifestation. And you also have to understand it. There was a season of the manifestation of the son, but it was the manifestation of the son Jesus that brought every one of us to the season of manifestation of the sons. So this is not the season of the manifestation Manifestation of one pastor Abraham. No, this is the season of the manifestation of everyone that is born of the spirit of God. Because there is an agenda of the king that will not find expression until you get to the point of manifestation. So he says, for the endless expectation of creation, eagerly await for the manifestation of the sons of God. Verse 20. What are the sons coming to do? What is the major reason? What is the purpose of the manifestation of the sons? Are they just manifesting for the sake of manifestation? No. He said, for the creation was made subject to vanity. Not willingly, but by the reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. What is the hope? The hope is that a season is coming. Verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. The creature was subjected to vanity. And the creature has gone into the bondage of corruption. But the plan of God is for creature to be delivered from the bondage of corruption. And that deliverance happens through the sons that will not only deliver creation from the bondage of corruption, but they are going to bring creation into the liberty of the sons, the children of God. Praise the Lord. Okay. Having said this, I said something yesterday. I needed to pick up so that you can have understanding that we're going to run. I said something yesterday. That there are two very important designations that God uses for everyone that is born of the Spirit of God. Number one is the child of God. And number two is the sons of God. So the first one is the children of God. But you notice that the Bible here is not talking about the manifestation of children of God. It's talking about the manifestation of the sons of God. So there's something that happens to a child that grows the child from a child and matures the child to become a son. In the book of Isaiah 9 verse 6, I gave you yesterday that we have children. There was a time Jesus was a child. But there's a time the same Jesus became a son. Because the Bible said unto us a child is born. And it's talking about Jesus in prophecy. So there was a time Jesus was a son. He was born a, a child. But he said unto us a son is given. So you find out that God will give a son as a gift to a community. Will give a son as a gift to a ministry. Will give a son as a gift and these sons that are gift will take on the responsibility of advancing the government of God. Because upon the shoulder of the son shall the government, the, he said, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. I'll give you an example. Pastor Abutu, the one that preached to you now, was once a music director. Presently, the music director in Rojik, in Abuja. But presently, he's being prepared to go to Canada to be the resident pastor of Rojik, Canada. So there was a time he was a child. There was a time he grew and continued to grow. But now he is being gifted 
as a gift by God through his pastor to a nation called Canada. The reason God is sending him because the man of God is thinking, who can take up this work and do it exactly the way I do it? And who do, amongst the men I have here has the capacity to go? And God pointed to him and said, send him. He has what it takes. But there's something you need to understand. A son does not become a son to, to by eye service. A son does not become a son by by, um, give me the word now. I'm, trying, I'm looking for the word now. By pretense. Pretending in front of your pastor to be who you are not. Does not make you a son. What makes you a son are the things you do to yourself in the secret the work you deploy in the secret knowing that my work with God is not to impress my pastor my work with God is to be a co-laborer with my pastor for the advancement of the kingdom of God that brings me to something every church breathed by Jesus has a kingdom agenda committed to them that we have an agenda committed to us as a ministry by God for the advancement of the kingdom of God. But you need to know something. That it is not children that will advance the kingdom. It is not children that will advance the work. It is sons, men and women that have grown to the point of spiritual maturity. So the reason he can boldly send him to a nation... And we have less supervision. is because he has grown to become a son. I say this because the Bible said that sons are given. So sons are gifts. God plant in cities. Sons are gifts. God plant in nations. Sons are gifts. God plant in communities. In campuses. And sons need less supervision. Because they know the will of the father. Sons need less supervision. Because they are there to bring the father pleasure. There's an awareness. Because the challenge we have in the church of Jesus Christ presently. Is that we have too many children and less sons. We have little sons. Because when a son emerges the plan of the son is not his agenda the plan of the son is the agenda of the father going to canada he's not going there to do what comes to his head he's going there to replicate exactly what you have in rojik abuja He's going to do exactly what I have seen here. The things I have seen here is what I'm going there to do. Why? Because I am meant to bring the father pleasure. Both my spiritual father here on earth and father God in heaven. I am meant to bring them pleasure. If you are the one bringing headache in the church and causing headache. As a matter of fact, you cannot be bringing trouble and pains in church on earth. And think you are bringing God glory in heaven. It is not possible. So the challenge here is that there are too many children that need to transit from childhood to sonship. That's where I want to start this morning. There are too many children. And as and one of the signs of childhood is that you do what you think and what you like, not what you are instructed. One of the signs of childhood, irrespective of how long you have been in the faith, is that you do what you think. You do what you like, not what you are instructed. A son gets to the point where 
he knows I am here to do the master's will. I am not here. Jesus said, Lord, not my will. No matter how painful it's going to be, not my will, but let your will be done. Because in doing the will of God is going to cause you pain. In doing the will of God you require is going to drag you out of your comfort zone. In doing the will of God is going to require sacrifice. That you're going to sacrifice a lot of things to do the will of God. But you need to know that the will of God and doing the will of God releases unusual dimension of authority and power upon your life. Listen, I wouldn't have known this pastor, Pastor Abutu, if it's not for Apostle Goodhart. That he has come to the point where he has done the will of his pastor and does it so well that his pastor can send him and he's somewhere and he sends him and believes in his heart that this one will deliver because he the idea is to do the will of the one that sent him. For me, this morning, Pastor Abutu is a message to all of you. Yes. The greatest message I can preach now is him to you. For you to understand. Listening to him, I wasn't hearing him. I was hearing the heart of his leader. I was hearing the heart of his pastor. Meanwhile, the pastor is not here. He spoke to me yesterday about him. And I said, okay, this morning, let me see him. And I have seen. And I can see the spirit is one. Can we close eye and send you? And you do what you are sent to do. This one that you need too much supervision in my presence. Then how much of it will you need in my absence? The challenge is where the son needs to become a son. But the son is doing what comes to his head. Not what he's instructed to do. The instruction of Jesus is to come. Now, let me say this. Please find for me, not my will, but let your will be done. Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 27. Let me say this. The will of Jesus was not to die on the cross. Hope you know that. Eh? It was not the will of Jesus to die on the cross. 2242, find it for me. You can use Luke, you can use Matthew. There's a Matthew version, there's a Luke version. The will of Jesus was not to die on the cross. You know, when we say this now, somebody will get offended spiritually. What are you saying? It was the will of God. For Jesus to die on the cross. But Jesus came to the point where he submitted his will to do the will of God. I will show you Matthew. And I will show you the same when the, the writer of Hebrew talked about it in the book of Hebrew chapter 10. He says, saying... Find for me not my will, but let your will be done. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. If you are willing, O oh God, remove this cup. Meaning, it is not my will to drink this cup. Because the cup comes with so much pain. And I have seen death at the end of the partaking on this cup. But he says, nevertheless, not my will. But thine be done. The only or the one major sign. That reveals that a child has grown from childhood to sonship. Is where you are out there to do the will of the father. Doing the will of the father will cost you so much. Doing the will of the father will inconvenience you. Whether it's your spiritual father that sent you on mission, on assignment. 
or the heavenly father that has sent every one of us in Christ. The will of the father. The greatest position of advantage and the greatest position of relevance and influence for any child of God is in the center of the will of God. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 5, though we are going to verse 7, you can see this. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Verse 6. In bond offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou had no pleasure. Verse 7. Let's read together one to go. Read Bible now. One to go. Please come again. And Jesus, though the writer of Hebrew was talking about the encounter and the experience of Jesus, but every messianic scripture also refers to everyone that is born of God in Christ. So I can quote this scripture and believe this scripture for me because this scripture talks about the life and the existence of Master Jesus. So he said that he, did, he came to present God a body. And what he has come to do is to do the will of God and that will of God is written in the book that tells you something. There is a book that contains the will of God for the church, Master Builder Global Church. And there is a book that contains the will of God for your life. Your relevance to God is not doing what you think. Your relevance to God is doing what is written for you to do on this side of time. There's a will. He said... Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. There's something written of you. There's something written of the church. And our assignment is to do it. One of the things that God does is that God brings you to the church that has the capacity to unlock your will. To do the will. What do I mean? There is a will of God for every church. And in joining that church to do the will of God, you are fulfilling the will of God for your life. Hello. The will of God for your life is to serve God. But sometimes in the capacity of serving God, some of us don't know how. Until you come into an assembly. Until you come into a church. And that church that is given to do the will of God. Unlocks you and reveals to you how to serve the will of God in your time and in your generation. So based on this, the reason God sent some of you to the Master Builder Global Church. And if you are not a member of the Master Builder Global Church listening to me online. The reason God sent you to that church is there is a will of God for the church. And in joining to do the will of God for the church, you are going to fulfill the will of God for your life. So you have to understand it. So the will doesn't fight. Because you need to know this. The will doesn't fight. Because it is one. It is not 20. It is not 100. It is not 50. The will doesn't fight. So what it means is that when you come to the church of Jesus Christ. One major thing that must be discovered is the will of God for your life. And what you must deploy yourself to do is to do that will of God. And in doing it, you fulfill the general will of God for the church of Jesus Christ. Hello. So see the problem. The problem is that it is now very difficult for a lot of believers to do the will of God. They do what they like, not what has been written for them to do. They do what they think, not what is written for them to do. 
That is why a lot of believers are, some believers are more powerful. Some believers are more daring. Some believers are used by God to advance his kingdom at such a speed. The only reason is happening why it looks like one believer is more effective than another believer is not the skill, is not the ability, is the discovery of the will. I repeat, the reason one believer looks more powerful than another in the execution and the establishment of the kingdom of God is not because of the ability of that individual believer. No, ability is secondary. It's because of the discovery of the will. Because in the center of the will, abilities, graces are deployed. Because the grace of God is the divine enablement to do the will of God. Thank you. The grace of God is the divine enablement to do the will of God. So in the will of God, you don't cry for divine ability. You don't cry for enablement. Enablement is deployed to empower you to do the will that you have discovered. So reason some believers are more powerful. The reason why some believers look at like they are more anointed is because of the discovery of the will of God for their life and the will of God for the church of Jesus Christ they are connected to. It is dangerous for any believer in these last days to do what he thinks or likes and not do what the Lord has willed. It is dangerous for any believer in this last days, for any member of the Master Builder Global Church, for any member of the Church of Jesus Christ to do what he likes and not what has been willed and written in the book. You were recruited by him to do his will. Another word for will is plan. Another word you can use for will is agenda. So there is a plan of God for us. There is a plan of God for you as an individual. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I know the plan I have for you, says the Lord. It is the plan of good and not of evil. To give you a future and an expected end. So there is a plan. And that plan is, your work is to discover cover the plan and pursue the plan to the point of execution. In the plan of God for your life is your relevance. Now I want to drive it home to everyone that is connected to us in the Master Builder Global Church. If you notice in this place the Bible says that I have come as is written of me in the volumes of the book to do your will, O oh God. What it means is two major things. The will of God is calibrated in phases. It's calibrated in stages. And the life of the individual is also calibrated in seasons. What determines a new season for you is the embrace of the will of God for that season. So it is the phase of the will that unlocks a season. I repeat, the will of God is broken into phases. And your life is broken in seasons. So what unlocks a season is not just fasting and prayer. What unlocks a season is the embrace of the will. By your ability to embrace the will of that phase unlocks a season. There is a season for him now. And that season is to travel abroad and do ministry at another level. 
The only reason is because he connected to the wheel for the face. And that face unlocks a season of his life and destiny. So what it tells you is the connection of to the will of God for the face that we are in now unlocks a season in your life. So the season of your life is not majorly unlocked by fasting and prayer. I know the fasting and prayer will play a major role when you enter the season. But what unlocks the season is the embrace of the will of God of that phase. In the church of Jesus Christ, like the Master Builder Global Church, there is a will of God for us in this phase. Your ability to connect to the will of this phase unlocks a season in your life. There are some. Hey, let me say this. There are some ministries that are doing very well now. Churches that are doing very well. I don't want to call the name. But you know there are a lot of big churches that are doing things now. The reason those churches are big, doing big things, is because the leaders, members in the church understood the phase of a wheel and got connected to it. That phase unlocked a season for the church. And you need to know, when a season for a church is unlocked, it looks like the people in the church are too powerful. Both the church and the leadership, they look so powerful. They sometimes they look larger than life. What brings them, what brought them to that point is not necessarily their ability as individuals. It's the discovery of the will of the face, connecting to it, and every person got connected. Because the error is, the body cannot experience in fullness what the head is experiencing if you are not where the head is. So the discovery of the face of the church, of the will of God for a church, is not just for the pastor. No, it is for every leader, for every member. Because there is a part you must play for that will of God for the face to be enlarged, to be unlocked. That ushers the church into a season. So there are ministries that are in seasons of prosperity. It's because they discovered the face of the will. The problem we have is that some believers want to run to that church that are now in a phase of the wheel but not knowing that the only reason they are there is that some powerful leaders, some leaders in the church had to sacrifice self, has to sacrifice their personal plan and agenda to get connected to that phase and push it. And that enabled them to come to where they are. I have a good news for you. Running to a ministry that is in a new season will not help you. Because by the time you get there, boys have taken position. There are some men that have taken position because they are the ones that push that ministry, that church to the point where it is now. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the master builder global church is standing on the threshold of a new phase of the will of God. It's broken into phases. We are standing on the threshold of a new phase. What is, what are we waiting for? Why is that phase not unlocking a season? The reason is that many of the leaders who are meant to buy into it are still more interested in personal agenda than the will and the plan of God for us in the phase. Listen. The prosperity of a church is more powerful than the prosperity of individual members of the church. And what it means is that the prosperity of a church will bring every individual member to the phase and to the seasons of prosperity in their life. But there's something we must do for that to become an experience, for that to become a reality, is the embrace of the plan of God, the will of God for us, in this phase.
I said all that to say this. Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19 is where we are now in the Master Builder Global Church. And if you are not connected to it, you are delaying the manifestation of a new season. You are delaying the manifestation of a new season. I said this yesterday, there are two major things we are doing as a church now in this phase. And see, don't think it's a program. It's a phase of the wheel. Matthew 28, 18. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus spake unto them. Who was he talking to? The disciples saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Give me New Living Translation or NLT that says, go and make disciples. Verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. What are we talking about here? The phase where the master builder global church is, the phase of the wheel, is the phase of making disciples that will make other disciples. We call it discipleship making movement. DMM. That is where we are now. And there are two things here. Number one is that you are made a disciple. But number two is that the process doesn't stop with you. You rise up and become a disciple maker. This is where we are now. Because we have come to realize that empowerment did not come upon the followers. Empowerment, the anointed, the spirit of God that rested in the upper room did not rest upon the crowd that followed Jesus. Did not rest upon the multitudes. He rested upon the disciples. And that was an endowment, an empowerment to do what Jesus commanded them to do. So the anointing of the grace of God will not benefit a person much if you don't know the purposes for the grace of God. If you don't know the purposes for the anointing. The purpose is to do this. Go and make disciples. And the making disciples, don't stop. Make disciples that make other disciples. This is where we are in the Master Builder Global Church now. There are two major things happening. I say this because I'm emphasizing, I want to make strong emphasis on some things. There is a DMM, which is Discipleship Making Movement. And there is a CPM, which is Church Planting Movement. And when we say Church Planting Movement, we are talking about planting churches, planting fellowships, planting cells. Everywhere you turn, you become a vessel that God uses to plant his presence that will command deliverances and transformation for people in that environment. I'm coming to Romans chapter 8. So you notice the plan is to raise disciples. And make disciples that will make other disciples. If you are in the master builder global church, you are not connected to this. There are a lot of things that belong to us in this new phase that will never find expression in your life. Number two, there are dimensions of spiritual possibilities and abilities of the spirit that we are going, we already started wielding in this season that will never find expression in your life. The idea is journey with us as we journey and what happens to us will happen to you. Praise the Lord. To go and make disciples. But not only that you make disciples, as you make disciples, you and the disciples will have to plant churches, will have to plant fellowships, will have to plant different things as instructed by God through the spiritual leader that God has placed you under. So we are here to make disciples, but not only that, we are here to plant churches, to plant fellowships, to plant cells, to plant whatever needs to be planted. Let me say this because I'm in the neighborhood. The fastest key to transformation of a community, of a people, is church planting. 
the fastest gift, the key to transformation of a people is church planting. Because what happens is, now that you are a member of the church, I give you an example. You, the fullness of the capacities in you as a disciple will not be seen until you are given the opportunity to go and plant a fellowship somewhere, to go and plant a cell. Suddenly, your prayer life will just be redefined. You used to pray for 30 minutes, but now you are planting a cell. You are planting a church. You are planting a fellowship. Your prayer life of 5 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes is now 3 hours. Why? Something is happening to you. The work you are sent to do is revealing another dimension of you that was hidden until you are planted. Because until the corn of seed is planted, it remains alone. But when it's planted, it dies and brings forth much fruit. So that is the plan. The plan is that the you you are praying to see will not happen by sitting in the church every Sunday. The you you are praying to see, I want to carry the power of God. I want to see Jesus. I want to encounter Jesus. Will not just happen by church attendance. It will happen by you getting involved in making disciples and planting churches. Planting fellowships. Planting cells. Because God's way of bringing the sons or creation into the liberty of the sons is when the disciples, the sons, take on the responsibility of planting God's presence in neighborhoods, in communities, in schools, in environments. Because anywhere a church of Jesus Christ is planted, what you planted is the presence of God. And that presence of God will guarantee transformation and revival for the people that comes within the boundaries of that church. So there are two things we are doing now so that it can sink into you. If you are not doing this with us, you are far away from the will of God for us as a people. And I will also assure you, you are far away from the will of God for yourself as an individual. Is making disciples and planting churches. That is where we are now. I spoke with one of our leaders. Okay, it was a chat yesterday. And he said, I sent one of my disciples to a part of the town. And the person went there and emptied that environment and brought people with a bus to the program. The reason you came to this program alone this morning is that you lack a sense of discipleship. If you have a sense of discipleship, you know that not only me coming, I need to carry my disciples to come and hear so that the work of discipleship will become easier for me. Because when they are in the meeting and they hear pastor and they hear different men of God, it will be easier for me to interpret with them what they have heard and it will grow their capacity more. And this is the reason some believers come to church alone. Why? Because they are, they are not responsible for anyone that is growing in the faith. No parent goes to church and leave their children at home. Every parent will carry their children to church. Even if they are children, they keep them in children's department and they have to fellowship in the church. Why? Because they know in keeping them in the presence of God, something happens to them. So this is what happens when the disciple learns that I am not just here as a church member. Listen, and let me tell you this, and take it because I'm speaking to you under God. In the Master Builder Global Church, we don't raise church members. We are not here to raise church members. We are not here to make you a church member. From some of you coming from different churches, you were members there before. No. In this place, we are here to make Christ-like men. And making you a Christ-like man, a Christ-like woman, requires that number one, you become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And not only a disciple in experience, but a disciple in practice. Not only that you become a disciple, you become a disciple maker. That is what we are sent to do. If you are still sitting as a member, and you have been here for the last one year, two years, you don't know what we are doing, and you are far away from what God has accomplished 
has assigned us to do in this season. It's time for every person to get connected to this project. This is the will of God for this phase. And let me say this, overtaking is allowed. I will say this to you. Seeing him and encountering him. I know he has been around the apostle for a while. But I will tell you that there are some persons that met the apostle far before him. In that same system. And they are still sitting down, whiling away. Meanwhile, God is already sending him to a mission field. How serious you are to the project, to the phases, to the will of God in a church determines how much more God is going to unlock his personal plan and will for your life. You can see him on the journey and he's going to the nations. Some persons that met and they have been playing around. And there was something he said, which I want to emphasize. Give Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I will read the scripture and I will explain it. Many of you are seeking for marriage. Many of you are seeking for wealth. They are seeking for relevance. They are seeking for different things. They are the wrongest things to seek. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing men seek will be added unto you. So don't seek the additionals. Seek the reality. Then that reality, once you find it, we now command the additionals or the shadows to find expression in your life. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Seek to do the will of God. Seek to be in the center of the will of God for your life. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. He said, do not let the excitement of youth cause you to forget your creator. Honor him in your youth before you grow old and say, life is pleasant. Life is not pleasant anymore. Give me King James. Verse 2. That, that verse 1. The verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of your youth. Why the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them, and I have no pleasure in life. Because you were created to bring him pleasure. So you find pleasure in serving him. You find pleasure in the center of his will for your life. Remember the Lord thy God in the days of your youth. Can also be served the Lord in the days of your youth. And I can use another word to explain it. Bear your yoke of commitment to Jesus in the days of your youth. Because if you don't do it, a time is coming where you can cry like Solomon, vanity upon vanity. No, it is not vanity. It is a outside of the will of God. Life becomes vanity. In the center of the will of God, you bring him pleasure. It's outside of the will of God that these things are vanity. In the center of his will. Your life brings him pleasure. And that pleasure that you bring to him triggers the joy of God in your heart. So he says, remember, serve the Lord in the days of your youth. I can use another word. Bear your yoke while you are still a youth. There is a yoke you must bear for Jesus. My burden is light, my yoke is easy. There is a yoke you must bear for him. Bear that yoke now in your youth. Because if you don't do, age will count on you to the point where you don't have pleasure in the mundane again. Don't use your youth to pursue shadows. Don't use your youthful age to pursue shadows. To pursue the things that don't have, if, that don't have value both in time and in eternity. There's a time. Invest your youth in God. And the rest will be testimonies. Seeing him again reminded me of the young man that I saw last week Friday finished university, was a protocol officer in the church and his pastor told him, 
come and bear your yoke now as a youth. Now, when we say this, somebody will think, should every person be a pastor that they are going to send to pastor churches and the rest of them? Every person might not be a pastor like Pastor Abraham. But every person is meant to be a minister of the gospel that reconciles the lost back to God everywhere they find themselves. Everyone has been given the ministry of reconciliation where your life and the life you live is deployed to do the will of God and reconcile the loss back to God everywhere you turn. And what it means is that if you are given the ministry of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18, what it means is that the greatest gift God gave to you is the gift of a ministry apart from the gift of eternal life. It's the gift of ministry. Every other gift of the spirit is to amplify your ministry. Every other gift of the spirit is to amplify the ministry you are given. And what is that ministry? The ministry of reconciling the lost back to God is a ministry. So, so, so you have to understand. Because I'm in the neighborhood. I want to say your ministry is more important than your career. Your ministry is more important than your business. Your ministry is more important. As a matter of fact, your ministry is the primary. Your career is the secondary. Your career is a platform for the manifestation of your ministry. Your business is a platform for the manifestation of your ministry. What it means is that the platform is meant to carry me and so that there can be better vi uh, visibility of anyone that is standing on this platform for the one sitting at the back. So that is what your call is. That is what your ministry, uh, your career is. If your Career is not amplifying your core. That career is useless, both in time and in eternity. Because somebody can say, you know, pastor, I, I, I'm a businessman. I'm involved in business. The reason God gave you business is so that in business you can relate with people and reconcile people everywhere you encounter them to Jesus. And manifest the call of God for your life. This is what we are doing now, making disciples that have the awareness of God's divine mission. Making disciples that have the awareness of the mission of God. And that mission of God is very simple. What is the mission of God? World evangelization. What is the mission of God? World evangelization. That the earth will be filled with the knowledge of God like the waters cover the sea. That is the mission of God. And you are that man, that woman, God is deploying to go and get this job done. Having said this, I want to close with this. And we're going to pray. Psalm 144 from verse 12. The Master Builder Global Church is at the point and there are so many persons that God is sending to us now and there are so many persons that have been around us and are around us now and you need to understand where we are. We are at the point of making disciples that will make other disciples, that will plant churches, that will plant fellowships, that will plant cells in markets, in streets, in business hubs, downtown, and different places, anywhere you turn. You are meant to plant a fellowship. I listened to a man that planted, somebody was talking about a man that plants a worship center in his office and every Friday they close office and is he has a financial institution a financial institution they are into a whole lot of financial deals and the rest of them he said on Friday in Abuja they close that place down and turn that office into a worship center they call it worship experience on Fridays and every Friday, people gather to worship. And he now says, the only thing we do on Friday is worship. From Monday to Thursday, even Saturday, 
we can do business transactions, financial transactions. But on Friday is our day we give to God and my business and every staff will shut down to worship God. I said they have done it to the point where in those worship experiences, they invite men of God that will come and speak. And from that worship experience, God started giving them instructions. And one of the instructions he gave them is to do a seven days all night worship. So every night they would do night of worship for seven days. And different instructions and directions. And the man said in his very words, that when other people are complaining that business is bad, we are rising and we are making profit. He said, because everywhere we wash, every time we worship the king, the king comes to give us solution to the problems, give us advantage, give us the wisdom to do the business better than our colleagues, better than the people that we are in the same line of business with. He said, we have grown capacity and we are so large that they run in multiple billions. Just because the man understood what I am saying to you now, that he did not just end with coming to church on Sunday. He took ministry to his office. That office became the platform for the manifestation of his call. And by the time they started, they have encountered all manner of graces and blessings of God that shocks every person around them. When the man begins to share testimony, you testimonies that sound like a lie. When grace is upon you, some of the things you do will sound like a lie. Some of the things you'll be sharing, some of will say, forget that thing, it's not possible. Forget that thing, it's not possible. Because grace makes the impossible possible. Your greatest advantage in your office is not what you do in that office. It's the presence of God you bring into that office. It's your ministry that you bring into that office to redefine what that office represents, both to God and to humans. And he said something. He said, on Friday... Other CEOs of other companies will gather in the place to worship God. And from there, discipleship began. He is now the discipler of other CEOs because he responded to God. Because program does not make sense until that program ends with discipleship. Salvation will not make sense until salvation ends with discipleship. Where you have men and women that you disciple and lead on the path of Christ. But that brings me to something. Psalm 144 from verse 12. And I'm going to read. And from here we're going to pray. It said that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youths. That our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. How will these things be? Verse 13. That our ganas, our stores, as a ministry, as a church, may be full, affording all manner of store, affording all manner of treasures, resources that we need to do the project God has called us to do. That our sheep, members, may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets. That when these things happen, our sheep will become productive. And they will multiply in thousands and tens of thousands. Verse 14. That our ox leaders may be strong to labor. Because when the sheep multiply, then leaders are needed to be strong, to labor in turning the, sheep, the lamb to sheep that will be strong enough to multiply again. Ox here is talking about leaders. Sheep here is talking about members. But ox is talking about leaders that will be strong. To convert members to become leaders that will be more effective and more fruitful. He said that our leaders, that us may be strong to labor, that there will be no breaking in or going out 
that there will be no complaining in our churches. There's no breaking out. There's no losing of members. There's no losing of committed people to us. There is no complaining amongst us because leaders have become strong. That converts the thousands of sheep to also become leaders that work in the system. Verse 15 is a beautiful part. Let's read together. I want to go. Let's read the Bible now. I want to go. Happy is that people. Happy is that church that is in such a state where members are multiplying and where leaders are strong enough to make sure there's no breaking out, there's no breaking in, to make sure there's no complaining. Like you notice what happened in the early church when there was complaining amongst them and they have to raise leaders that address that matter of complaining that would have led to unusual tension and that would have led to people leaving the system. And leaders were raised to address it. And he said, a people like this will be happy. The reason complaining is on, the reason members are lost is because the leaders are weak. The leaders have not taken the responsibility that we are called to take, which is to make disciples and raise leaders that God can use to advance his kingdom. This is where we are. If the master builder global church will have a happy people, a people that rejoice in God, we must have strong leaders and we must have members that multiply in thousands and tens of thousands. This is where we are. Amen. Amen. This is where we are. So the question is, where are you in the equation? What exactly are you doing? What exactly are you doing? What part of this project are you involving? Are you at the point of multiplying tens of thousands? Or are you at the point where you make sure there's no breaking out and there's no cry, there's no complaint in our streets? And that brings us to the point where we rejoice and we are a happy people. Which part are you playing for the advance of the work in the Master Builder Global Church? It is beautiful to have a church like this. But to have a church like this, every person must be committed to the assignment. And that assignment I'm talking to leaders is to rise up and become strong and do that which God has assigned to us. Make disciples. And you and these disciples that you have made, go plant fellowships. Go plant churches. The rest will be testimonies. What are you doing? And I want to say this. This season is dangerous to be outside of the will of God. It is dangerous in this season to be outside of the will of God. This is the will of God for us as a church where we make disciples that make other disciples that plant churches. And when we get to that point, we will have a happy people, people that will rejoice. Now, let me say this because I'm in the neighborhood. If you are still in this church gossiping and complaining, you are an enemy of Jesus Christ and you are an enemy of the church. Why? The gossip creates unusual tension and the gossip... The gossip creates offense and bitterness in the heart of the people that should be happy rejoicing in the presence of God. Jesus made a statement, if you are not gathering with me, you are scattering. If you have not taken the assignment Jesus gave to you, you are an enemy of Jesus in his church. 
Gossip creates unusual tension in the church. And gossip creates offense in the heart of men. Please, I beseech you in the name of the Lord. Anything that you do that will not make us a happy people are things you must desist from as a leader, as a member of the Master Builder Global Church. Any people that, anything that you do that will leave our members scattered, discouraged, sometimes some persons are discouraged from coming to church. If, as once the day start counting and it enters Friday and Saturday, the person now thinks Sunday is coming again and that we're going to go to church. And the reason it's coming again is because of the wrong seed you planted through gossip. The wrong seed and the offense that was planted through gossip that has made the individual to lose faith in the church and is about to lose faith in Christ. You become the enemy of God and the enemy of Jesus Christ. Anything that will make us anything other than a happy people are things you must desist from as a leader in the Master Builder Global Church. Bow down your heads and talk to God. What position have you taken? What position have you taken in this house to make sure that the world grows and where we have thousands and upon thousands in our streets? And not only that we have thousands in our streets, where there's no complaining amongst us, where there's no breaking out, where there's no going away, where there's no falling away of the men and women that God has given to us. Someone take a position right now. And I said earlier, the best position you can take is the position of a disciple. Where everyone around you, you convert to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Someone make a commitment to the work. Make a commitment to the work. And maybe you have made that statement, oh, I'm not interested in this. I'm a business person. You just have to know at this point that the most important part of your business is the business of the kingdom. Bringing men and women to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and advancing the kingdom of God through your effort. On site, online, someone pray. And make a commitment to what you heard today. Make a commitment to what you heard today. That from this day on, I will play my part. From this day on. For some of us who have fallen, some of the things we used to do. Some of us who have lost our first love, that compassion, that commitment to soul winning, that commitment to disciple making, that commitment the you that used to be very passionate for God and very passionate for the things of his spirit, that passion is gone and you can pray today and say oh God I pray and I ask for restoration of that which I have lost passion for God, passion for the things of his spirit passion for souls that passion to bring the church of Jesus Christ to the point where everyone is happy because of you. That position you have taken to become a burden bearer, a burden bearer in prayer, a burden bearer in your service unit for the advance of the work of Jesus Christ. Someone pray. Someone pray. Make a commitment to all the things you heard this morning. The one you heard when Pastor Abutu preached. And the one you heard from me. Make a commitment. God is a God of commitment. And once you commit, the equivalent grace will be released to empower your commitment. 
once you commit to a thing, the equivalent grace will be released. As you commit to discipleship, as you commit to using your youth to serve the Lord, as you commit that from this day I will give quality time to God and the things of His Spirit, the equivalent grace will be deployed to make those a reality, to make your commitment a reality in your work with God. I give my life away. I give my heart away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, Jesus, I give myself away so you can use me. I give is not my own to you I belong I give myself I give myself to you my life is not my own my life is not mine to you Lord I belong to you I belong I give myself I give myself, I give myself. Someone converted to prayer. As they sing, converted to prayer. I say, Lord, I give myself away. So that I will do your will. I give myself away. For the advance of your kingdom, I give myself away. I plant my life as a seed in the center of your will, O oh God. Use me to advance your kingdom. Let your will be done, O oh God. Heavenly Father, I pray today and I commit everyone into your hands. And Lord, we commit our life again to you. And we say, Lord, not our will, but let your will be done. We we'll give our life to you. We we'll give our life to you. We were made to bring you pleasure. We were made for you. We were not made for ourselves. We did not make ourselves. We were made for you. 
and to bring you pleasure. Lord, we commit our life into your hands. We sow our life as a seed in the center of your will. Let our life bring you pleasure. Let our life do that which will bring glory to your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, dear Shant of this. Someone make this prayer. Say, Lord, I plant my life as a seed in the center of your will. Let my life bring you pleasure. Let my life bring you pleasure. Let my life bring you pleasure. Let my life be used to advance your kingdom. Let your will thrive in my life. Let your will prosper in my life. Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, the ancient of these. And glory be to the name of the Lord our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> if you have your offering, you can lift it up. Let's receive the offering or you have the tithe you want to pay. In the name of Jesus, I receive the offering and I declare the givers blessed. And I declare your tithe also blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Please project the account details for us. Um, Pastor Butu, we're going to have a short, a brief meeting with you after now. Um, please lift your offering up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare the offering blessed and I declare the givers blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Please project for us the account details of the church. You can also transfer your offering for the ones that don't have cash you want to do a wire transfer. You can do that and the Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can cast your offering. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord as we offer, as we offer unto thee the sacrifices of thanksgiving as we offer unto sacrifice of praise we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord as we offer as we offer unto thee the sacrifice Amen. Lord, we'll bless your name. We'll give you praise. We'll thank you for in Jesus' name we pray. Please, the zonal leaders and the pastors, we're going to have a brief meeting. Both the branch pastors, we're going to have a brief meeting with him. Just a few minutes. Then um, we can now go back. Whatever. Then the other ones, remember this evening is 5 p.m. I remember what we said. Go and bring your friends. Go and bring your family members. Don't come here alone. What you said is bring five persons to church this evening. Five persons to church this evening. And the gift we'll have to give to everyone is already out there. So bring your friends to also be part of it. And the Lord will bless you as you do so. But this evening, tell your neighbor, don't come alone. Pastor have said that you should come with five persons. Yes, be talking, be telling someone that you should come with five persons. Hope you have five persons you are going to come with. If you don't, go to the streets now and invite them and let them be part of the meeting. See you in the evening and tell the person, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And surely... Tell the person, cheer up. Yes. For the Lord is with us.
See you in the evening by 5 p.m. You are going to use buses, use buses, whatever you are going to use to move people to fellowship today, to evening session. Do that. Um, album come.